Hey guys, I hope you're doing okay at home in quarantine. Um, we're sending you a quick little video today to help you continue to prepare for the Sacrament of Confirmation. Um, just like with anything in life, if you want to get the most out of it, the best thing you can do is um, to prepare. Yes, God will give us everything that we need freely through the sacrament, but it's up to us to be willing to receive it. You know how Nate said at the retreat, one-way relationships are creepy. So we're going to help you try and come up with some ways that you can grow in your relationship with God while at home. We're going to talk about four things. We're going to talk about service, scripture, prayer, and being in a state of grace and what that looks like while you're at home. Okay, so our first topic is service. So because of our love of Jesus Christ and his love for us, we're called to serve those around us. Typically, when we think of doing service for confirmation, we think about going out into the world and serving people that way and maybe doing a big service project. But while you're at home, there's lots of ways that you can help serve. Um, one example would be as if you have younger siblings to help them with their virtual learning. It'll help your parents out a little bit, give them a little bit of extra time maybe to do things for themselves at home. Um, and it will also help your sibling to know that you love them and actually care for them um, and not be fighting with them all the time. Another thing you can do is to help your parents with dinner. Maybe offer to help make dinner one night, offer to help do the dishes. Maybe just do the dishes without them even asking or even knowing that you did them. Uh, another great thing that you can do is to make cards for people in nursing homes. Many of our loved ones are in nursing homes and they're even confined to their own rooms. So if you sent them a little bit of a card, if you sent them a little card, it would be a great way for them to connect. Um, I know my, my grandfather is in the nursing home. My father-in-law is in, nursing, in the nursing home. Um, this is a picture of my grandfather FaceTiming with my dad. Um, right now, he's up in a nursing home in Lidditz, and he's confined to his bedroom. He can't even leave his bedroom to go to eat lunch. So um, they are so starved for human interaction. You sending them a card would just brighten their whole day. Um, this is a card of Nate's wife's grandfather. Um, he's in the same situation. So it may seem like something very little to you, but it's a big thing to them, and they look forward to those, those cards. Um, another way that you can serve is through prayer. Um, pray for your parents. Just like you, they are under so much stress right now with um, everything that's going on. A little prayer that you can say for them would, would be wonderful and help to bolster their strength a little bit. Pray for your classmates on the other end of your Google Meet calls or your Zoom calls. Um, they may be struggling with being, not being able to connect with other people, so pray for them. Remember that prayer is a great service that you can do. These are just a few examples, and I know you guys are already doing awesome things. This is just the tip of the iceberg, and I know that you'll come up with something great and creative. And if you do, share it with us. We would love to see what you're doing. So another great way for us to grow in relationship with God and with Jesus Christ is through um, looking at their word through the Bible. A great practice that we like to use is called Lexio Divina. And I'm going to give you a quick little rundown of how that works today. The first thing you're going to do is find whatever Bible passage you want to dive into and to reflect on a little bit more. Um, you could also look up the Sunday readings and see, um, see how, how you can relate to that. If you don't know how to find the readings for Sunday, you can go to usccb.org and they have a little calendar on their homepage and you just click on the day of the week and it'll give you whatever Bible readings are for that day. So how Lexio Divina works is you'll um, find a quiet spot to sit and pray wherever you cannot be or not as easily be distracted, okay? You'll open your Bible to whatever reading you are looking to reflect on and you'll read that one time. And then you'll sit with those words and see what words are hitting your heart, where the Holy Spirit is calling you to reflect a little bit deeper. Once you're done with that reflection, you'll read it again, and this time a little bit more slowly. And then see where you're being called even deeper and where the Holy Spirit is laying, what the Holy Spirit is laying on your heart. And then you'll read it one more time. And that's, that's really quickly how you would go through Lexio Divina. I know for myself, every time I hear a Bible story, even if I've heard it a million times before, something else strikes me. Strikes me. Something else makes me go, oh, I didn't think about that that way. Um, so it's just a great way to grow deeper and to um, build that relationship. 
Another great tool for diving into scripture is Life Team does Lexio Divina on their Instagram Live page. Um, so if you are uncomfortable doing that on your own or if you need a little bit of guidance, uh, Life Teen on Instagram is a great way to do that. They also hold different um, events on in their Instagram page that will help you grow into your relationship a little bit more. So I hope that helps. So just like any great relationship, you need to communicate with the other person. And how we can communicate with God is through prayer. Um, you, you've done a lot of work recently reflecting on the Bible stories associated with the rosary. So the rosary is a great tool that you can use and it's also something that you that is simple that you can do um, readily. We also have the gratitude rosary that Nate talked about at the retreat. And what that is, is on every Hail Mary bead of your rosary, you say something that you're thankful for. So that's a great tool to use at the end of the day. You can reflect on your day and what happened throughout that time that you are thankful for. And it makes you think a little harder about the little things. It's easy for us to come up with the big things to be thankful for, but the little things throughout your day that you can be thankful for, like a strong Wi-Fi signal. That's something you can be thankful for throughout the day. Or um, the fact that you had food to eat. That's something you can be thankful for. Or even um, that the sun was shining and you got to go outside. Those are things that you can be gra grateful for. Um, you've also done a lot of work with the Divine Mercy Chaplet, so that's another great tool that you can use. Um, and prayer doesn't have to be hard. It can be simple. It can be as simple as saying, Lord Jesus, guide me today. Help me to do your will. You can also say, you can also invoke the Holy Spirit to come. Just say, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will help guide you with whatever task it is that you're doing. Um, whether it's submitting something through Flipgrid or if you have a Google Meet with your teacher for school and you want to make sure that you're saying the right things just before you log on there, say, come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit. Another great tool that we talked about at the retreat is this Names for Jesus activity. And what that was is we each picked, picked a name for Jesus and we repeated that out loud over and over and over again. So for instance, if you said, Good Shepherd, you would just say, Jesus, Good Shepherd. Jesus the Good Shepherd, Jesus the Good Shepherd, for however long you want, and just really reflect on that name, and as you're saying that name, put an image in your head of Jesus. Um, and so that's a great way to kind of recenter yourself, refocus yourself. Another great way to pray is to um, call upon those saints that you chose. You each picked a saint name for confirmation, and those saints are up there in heaven, and they're waiting to pray for you. They're waiting to take your prayers to Jesus. So ask them, rely on them. They are forever your friend up in heaven looking to pray for you. And the same goes with Mary, Jesus' mother. I always say, if you want to get someone to do something, you ask their mom to do it. And Mary being Jesus' mom is just waiting to take your prayers to him. Okay, last thing for today. Normally, we would tell you, guys, keep going to confession. Because confession is super important. We need confession. We so need confession. And we would normally tell you, go to confession. But guess what? We can't tell you to go to confession because you, you, you can't. We, we, we can't do that right now. <laughs> so we can't tell you to go to confession. Um, which is crazy because confession is so necessary. We need it to be forgiven from our, from our sins. We need it to be connected to God. We need it to be able to live with God, to get to heaven. It's vital in our journey towards heaven absolutely 100% vital to have confession. So, if we can't go to confession, does that mean we're all doomed? Just all is lost? Oh well, give up, doesn't matter anymore. We're doomed! No, it's not, that's not, that's not what it means at all. Not at all. Well, not to. See, for times like this when you can't go to confession, the church gives us something called perfect contrition. You've probably heard this talked about a couple times now. It's been, you know, around. <laughs> but, um, and it's in the catechism. But perfect contrition, the idea here is when we are unable to go to actual confession, the next best thing is to have a sincere change of heart. And a sincere change of heart where we regret our sin, we're sorry for our sins, we have detachment from all sins, and we firmly intend to not sin anymore. So it's very similar to what we need to do to actually go to confession. Now, if we go to confession, but we have no intention of not sinning anymore, 
confession doesn't do, which, do us much good. We have to be sorry for what we did and intend to do it no more. Same thing here with perfect contrition. We have to be sorry for our sins, be detached from future sin, and intend to sin no more. And when done perfectly, now perfectly, perfect contrition can have the same effects and graces as if you had gone to confession. And you can forgive sin, even mortal sin, if you have perfect contrition. So the question then becomes, why don't we just do that all the time instead of going to confession? If I can just sit down and have a perfect change of heart, perfect contrition, and do that instead of going to confession, why go to confession? The simple answer is that, one, if we had perfect contrition, if we truly had 100% perfect contrition, you know what the first thing we would, we would want to do is? The first thing we would want to do is run to confession as fast as we possibly could. If we truly had 100% perfect con contrition, the first thing we would want to do is run to confession as fast as we possibly could. So, there's that. Uh, but secondly, perfect contrition is a process. It's not something you sit down and do, because I don't think any of us can sit down and do anything absolutely 100% perfectly at all. We can get pretty close on some things, but we can't do anything 100% perfectly, Inclu much less having perfect contrition. And so it's a process, much like confession is. With confession, the process is we sin, we go to confession, we receive sure, absolute forgiveness for our sins, and we receive sacramental graces to be able to go and sin no more. So we can grow in holiness all the quicker and with surety that we are forgiven for our sins. With perfect contrition, we are hoping that we get pretty close to perfectly contrite for our sins without the surety of forgiveness, just hoping that we got it right, and not necessarily gaining the sacramental graces. In both cases, we're working to grow towards perfect holiness. Both cases, we're striving for the same thing. But confession is the more sure way to go. It's the more absolute way to know we're being forgiven and to get towards holiness. That's why the church teaches confession and not perfect contrition. That's why you make your first confession and not your first perfect contrition. Because confession is much more sure than perfect contrition. But in times when you can't go to confession like now, perfect contrition is a really great way to do things. So how do you do perfect? How do you work towards a perfect contrition? And this is something you can do every single day. And in many cases, you probably should. The first thing is examine your conscience. Look at your day. How did you do? Where did you stumble? Next, um, say an act of contrition. Pray that act of contrition with your whole being, with your whole heart. And then finally, another great thing to do is if you're able to, on any of those sins that you examined your conscience on, if you're able to, make amends for them the best you can. If you had a fight with your sibling, go apologize. If you were snarky to your parents, go apologize. If you refuse to do your chores, do your chores and do some extra. You know, do something to make amends. So that's something you can work on. You can't go to confession, but you can work towards perfect contrition. Just an examination of your conscience, and that's contrition, and do what you can to make amends. As you continue to prepare for confirmation, remember the Holy Spirit's with you right now. And in the midst of craziness, that's when we need the Holy Spirit the most. So know that we're praying for you, know that eventually you will get confirmed, and that Holy Spirit's going to come into your life in such an amazing way, you won't even know what hit you. Have a good day. Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Emma, the youth minister. Um, I just want you guys to know that I am thinking of you all and praying for you. Um, and I know these times are hard, but I'm just so excited for when we can all be back together as a church community, we can celebrate um, so hang in there. I hope you guys are doing good and I'll hopefully see you guys soon. Take care. Bye.